Hello and welcome to Studio Meteora. My name is Miro Roman. I'm Adam Bukhari. And I am Jorge Orozco. And we want to share with you the research that we are conducting at the Chair for Digital Architectonics at ETH Zurich in close collaboration with ATTP in Vienna. So our design studio deals with the challenges and beauty of a world that is fully connected by computers that are constantly talking to each other. It deals with concepts of big data, information, the plenty, AI, and thinking. We think that these, uh, these concepts are in the 21st century are thought and articulated in a way that is promising to deal with them, we get to engage with them and discuss them from architectural position. Because if we do so, our hypothesis is that this will result in different architectural projects or in projects and buildings of a different kind of a kind of today. In, in Studio Meteora, we always make it a point to discuss global problems. It's, it's now become a tradition now that we are in our, in our sixth cycle. And we see this as not being any different from, from architects like Corbusier, architects like Alberti, like Krem Kolas as well, because they're always in sync with the technologies of their time and always discussing the global problems of the time. So this is, we would like to do it in a similar tradition. Nature this was the first uh, season of Studio Meteora where we were dealing with, uh, with, with, with an idea of radical recycling away from the cliches of sustainability and global warming, climate change, etc. Arguments was the second one where we were dealing with the, with the sanctioning of free speech in today's world and how a fry house could be constructed where, where talks could be had that are no longer possible, that are being sanctioned. Powers, the, the, the third one where we went to Paris and we built a, a, a huge mansion for, for Elizabeth Murdoch is where we were discussing how architects can give power a face, how they can make power structures in the city visible and graspable to societies. Alienations was the fourth one where we were discussing uh, uh, how to deal with cultural heritage in the 21st century where we took Lenny Ballardo from the young Pope and put him inside the Wittgenstein house in Vienna. It was a very good one, I think. <laughs> and then Engenderings, which was the recent semester that we had uh, now, where we took uh, Rem Koolas' Villa Bordeaux and we put Coco Chanel there, where we were dealing with the Xena Feminist Manifesto and what it could, what, what it could possibly have to offer for an architectural project and also what an architectural project could do to uh, a, a, a manifesto of such a, a, a sort. Faces will be the next one where we will deal with what it means to be a citizen in the city of the 21st century. And I think where, where it gets really interesting is the way how we want to, or how we approach these problems. So we don't want to approach these problems from a tabula rasa or from the plain uh, plane. We want to approach them from the plenty. So what, what does this mean? So we want to think what architecture might be about if we have all the books in the world, if we have all the images and all the videos in the world, if we have all the models in the world, how can we think of architecture then? And we have them. This is the, the world we live in. So all the models, images, books, still they are there and they're just one click away. But there is a, a kind of a paradox with dealing with all this data. So the, the thing is that the more data we have, the bigger the data is, it will not show us the objectivity of the world but it will show us in a way the world we want to see. So how to play with this thing? Because this thing some people call the fake news, but I think it's much more productive and interesting if we start playing with these objects as if they were alive and if we start talking to them, looking at them and see how they behave. In this manner, we can make stories. We can tell beautiful stories and go beyond moralizing of objects, go beyond analyzing of objects, go beyond finding the truth of things, because in this interconnected world, it's very tricky to find the truth. It's much nicer to look how objects behave. So in the studio, we have three different modules. We work with the text, we work with images and movies, we work with 3D models, and out of all these different constellations, we try to create beautiful architecture. In the first module, we 
write a text, which is a kind of a funny thing for an architectural studio. So we give three weeks to write a beautiful text, let's say a constitution of architecture that's going to come out. Or in other words, we could say we are trying to, to create a, a kind of a fertile ground from which our projects can grow. Of course, we do this coming from the plenty. We work with machine intelligence. We work with big data. We have as big data, we have a library, a library of books. So we write with a lot of books, with more than 1500 books, but it's kind of tricky to write with more than 1500 books. Therefore, we use machine intelligence as a way how to navigate in between those books and with concepts. The, the library is called Xenoteca, and we search the library Xenoteca with a search engine called Ask Alice. Together, I think, in a very beautiful way, they bring these core concepts very close. So we, we are with literacy, we are with plenty, we are with machine intelligence, connectivity of elements, and we want to talk through architecture about specific global problems that we are interested in each season. When we do this, when we write in this way, we think of books, concepts, as even, and even libraries as live objects. So which means that if a book goes from one library to another library, it will tell a different story. Its concepts will behave in a different way. By this, concepts, books, objects, and our architecture in a way keeps open. So it grows by relating to other elements. So when we write, we write with all the books, we write with all the libraries, we write with all the famous architects, with the philosophers, we play with their words, we talk to them, we, we kind of, in a way, become friends. And the stories that we write, they bring together objects, atmospheres, scenes, movies, architectures, and so on. In a way, we are creating, in this first part, we are creating synthetic scales to think of architecture. So writing with libraries and books, in a way, creates a certain friendship between us and them. But then what is interesting that some questions come out which were a little bit unexpected. For instance, the question of authorship. So who is the author of this text which is written with 1,000 books? Is it me? Is it Alice? Is it you? Are we all together? How do we give it a name? So these kind of questions are in the background that we are dealing with, but this is not the only thing in Meteora that we do. <clears throat> we also work with images. So <clears throat> we, at, at, uh, after the first week, weeks, we have already certain directions. We have certain, uh, we have a lot of voices. We start to identify where the projects are going. And what we do in the second episode, we start to bring colors to them. We start coloring the sounds. So we deal with millions of images, so they can help us to show the ideas. They can help us to show the ideas, the colors, the textures, the proportions, the objects, the moods that will inhabit or that will open up the space to be. For that, we have uh, uh, Studio Meteora has its own uh, collection of movies, uh, panoramas of cinema with more than 1300 movies and more than 2 million images and a custom made search engine that is constantly uh, shifting and sliding a little bit every semester re regarding the brief and regarding the, con the specific conditions, the specific questions that we're asking each semester. So <clears throat> we have, we have uh, a lot of footage, we have a lot of sceneries, we have a lot of perspectives, a lot of objects, a lot of, of, of stories, a lot of dramas, a lot of clothes. We have a lot of, of, uh, of uh, uh, images and data and information that help, helps us to bring these concepts that we've been dealing with for, for a few weeks already, to start to bring them to light, on, to start to, to, to distinguish things and put them in relation to their consequences with, with gravity. So what we do now is uh, we deal with these images in, in principle two ways. One, to show how the space to be may look like. And the other, what kind of, if the position of the architect makes sense. If, if somehow uh, uh, one feels resonance with the ideas of the brief, with the ideas of the persona that is kind of finding its, its voice within, within the plenty. 
And with this, after a few weeks of work, then we go to a final stage uh, with Adil, when again, these things get, get, uh, get, uh, cher these ideas get cherished, cherished and uh, new, new ways to talk about them just come up. Yeah, taking the baton from, from Jorge then, <laughs> then it's yet another form of storytelling towards an architectural project. So what we do is, is we, start, uh, we start looking at the already rich corpus that the students have built over the course of the first two modules, the, the already somewhat consistent corpus of, of, of work that has been produced, and then we start locating it towards an electric model of our sites, whatever that might be. So this was the Wittgenstein house in, in season four, it was uh, Maison Bordeaux in season five, God knows what it will be in, in season six, but it's, it's, it's always the, 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 somehow the, the locating, the, the discretizing and placement of these stocks within certain spaces. So screens are activated, so these, these stocks are staged, and then the, the constitution of the house emerges from, from these kind of exercises. So the, the methodology I like to call for this particular module is the diorama, where we look at both at and through the, the, the rich body of work that is already there. And then we deal with online libraries of millions of 3D models of images and animations, textures, materials, techniques of construction even, and, and use them within a space that is good for all of them, that can accommodate all of them. So suddenly all of these, of, of these tools, techniques that uh, our production is generally uh, uh, dictated by, suddenly we are in a, in a moment where we play with them, where we stage them in a certain manner. And it's, it stops being about the virtuosity of certain crafts, but of a nimble movement and the, the, the preference of, of, uh, of selection and intention towards what you are producing, producing an operative diorama that works very much like a demountable approximation that can render in many possible ways, but it becomes precisely about choosing, selecting certain things. So with these three modules, we, we come up with architectural projects that are always articulated all at once, all at the same time and always together. And with this, we would like to welcome you to Meteora.seha. Please visit us there and follow us on Instagram at Meteora.seha. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.